Hello everyone. In this video series, I am discussing about types of grounding. In the previous video, I already explained about ungrounded system. What is ungrounded system? What is the advantage, disadvantage during fault condition? How much current would flow? Everything we have discussed in it. Today, I am going to discuss about solidly grounded system. Let us start now. What is solidly grounded system? In the electrical power system, the generator or the transformer neutral point if it is connected directly to the earth without any resistance with a pure conductor. So, this kind of earthing system is called as solidly grounded system. So, this jumper or this conductor will have very very less resistance so that the ground, ground fault current will be very high. During a faulty condition, the current which would flow in this particular conductor will be very high. So, let us see in detail. So, this is how the solidly grounded system will look like. So, we have a transformer here, a delta 2 star connected transformer. Here in the star connected side or a secondary side, we have a neutral point connected to the earth with a pure conductor and this conductor will have a very high conductivity or you can say very less resistance. On the other hand, you can see in the load side, we have delta connected a load and here we can see that the system is connected equipment grounding. So, it is connected to ground through equipment or the metal casing of the machine is connected to ground. In a normal operating condition, the voltage which is applied in the three phase system is very much balanced and the current which is flowing to the three different phases or the three different coil also in a equal value. So, as it is shown here, the line voltages is 480 volt 1 to <coughs> line 1 and line 2 is having 480, line 1 and line 3 also 480 and line 2 and line 3 also is having 480 volt and the phase voltage is 277 volt. And during a normal operating condition, the voltage or the potential between the neutral point and the ground is 0 volt. So, this is a normal operating condition. Let us see what happens during faulty condition. So, now here let us assume two different conditions. First, let us assume that uh, the conductor is connected here uh, like this. So, here the ground conductor is connected like this. So, what happens when during the faulty condition? So, here there is a fault. Here there is a fault. Here this phase is connected to the equipment body and because of this connection, what happens? The equipment body carries the electrical current and it passes through the equipment grounding like this it goes to the ground. So, this path will have very less resistance as well and here uh, it is because of a small conductor which is connected here this also will have very less amount of resistance and the path which is provided here for the fault current is like this it is like this. So, all these are connected in a uh, you know very less resistance path. So, because of this less resistance path, what is going to happen? The loop impedance that is Z is going to be very less. So, because of a less very, uh, very less uh, loop impedance, the fault current will be very, very high. Okay. So, because of this, the fault current will be very high. And let us assume the other case when, when the conductor, uh, the equipment ground conductor is broken like this. So, what happens during this condition? So, when the human comes in contact with this uh, machine, okay. So, if this is not broken, then automatically the AV current which is flowing through this will uh, trip this circuit breaker because of this uh, high current, it will trip this circuit breaker. In case if there is a breakage here like this, what is going to happen now? No current will flow through this path. Instead, the, instead of that, the human when he is coming in contact with this particular machine, so the electrical current would flow through this human body and it is coming to the return path like this. So, now the resistance depends upon the resistance of this human body. The total resistance is going to depend upon this human body resistance. So, let us see with the calculation what is going to happen. So, during a dead short condition, so this is the phase voltage and uh, this is the point where this conductor res resistance, it is going to be very small resistance and this is going to be uh, ground to uh, this one resistance to ground return path. So, this return path resistance and then the third one resistance to 
resistance of neutral to ground bonding so this resistance so all these three resistance is going to be very small value say here 0 0.1 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 and the phase voltage is 277 so we get a 692.5 ampere it is going to be very high current so because of this high current what is going to happen this circuit breaker will trip or it will open the circuit and during this fault condition <coughs> how much power is being dissipated so we have a pa formula for power dissipation i square r so this is the power dissipated you will have 48 kilowatts of power which is dissipated which will be uh, you know comes as a heat okay which would uh, damage the insulation of the motor or the conductor or any other failure would result from this type of conditions in case uh, if there is um, breakage in the path like this and if the current is passing through the human body let us see what is the condition so here we have the same 277 volt and the human body resistance taken as 1000 ohms and this is the return path 0.2 ohms and this is the neutral to earth bonding resistance so we have 277 milliampere as a overall current in this fault current and this current is very less to trip the uh, you know uh, uh, over current protection device like MCB whatever the MCB we have here or the overload relay what is, whatever it is there it is not going to open the circuit because this is only a milliampere but it is very high than the let through current. So the let through current for a human body is only 15 milliamperes if the current is more than 15 milliampere it is going to create a issue. So 50 milliampere of current in the human body is going to be a lethal one. So, how much we current we have? We have more than 277 milliamperes in this faulty condition. So, the overload or over current protection device is not going to protect the human from this particular type of fault. So, we are going to have a, a separate device which is going to sense this leakage current and it is going to trip the circuit with a little more faster than the MCB. So, let us see what they are going to use. Here uh, you can see there is a CT and a ground fault a relay so we have a ground fault a relay in <coughs> in this situation you can see there is a fault here and the phase 1 current is 10 ampere and the phase 2 and phase 3 we have a return currents of 5 ampere and a 4 ampere current so the summation in a normal con condition would be 5 ampere and 5 ampere so the total current in this uh, circuit will be uh, the vent at the neutral point will be a zero so the current which is flowing towards the load and which is coming from the load the summation would be a 0 but uh, due to the fault what is happening here the 1 ampere current is flowing through this earth point so because of that we have 1 ampere less in the third line so this difference will be detected by this uh, 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 CT and this CT signal which is given to this ground fault relay will detect this uh, difference and it will give the indication if it is connected with the MCB here and then it will open the circuit as well. So, let us see here what happens. So, in a normal condition the current I1, I2, I3 and whatever the number of phases you have. So, based on that the total summation will be 0. When, when you have a in this example 10 amperes and return current 5 ampere and 5 ampere you have a 0 amperes of current in the neutral point during the faulty condition what happens here the uh, incoming current to the load is 10 ampere and the return current in the phase 2 is 5 ampere and the return current in the second uh, the third phase is only 4 ampere so the you have a net result of 1 ampere so this 1 ampere current would be detected by the uh, ct and the ct will give the signal to the ground fault relay and the relay will give the indication or alarm or it may open the circuit. So, if you want to open the circuit, this can be connected like this. So, we have the circuit breaker here and this circuit breaker is connected to the shunt trip circuit breaker. So, the same thing here uh, instead of uh, only the relay, we are going to have a uh, connection to open the circuit here. Same condition you can assume we have a 10 amperes of current here and then 5 amperes here and then here 4 amperes. So, because of this difference it is going to give the signal and when the signal is available so this circuit is going to close like this. So, when this circuit is closed like this the current would flow from here uh, to and then it will come back like this and it will go through the coil and it will come back through this circuit like this and it will finish the path like this. So, during this condition 
the current will flow through this particular coil so when the coil is getting energized this will open the circuit breaker otherwise when when there is no fault uh, uh, fault is happening there so this circuit will be open and the mcb will be in the closed condition itself and the current would be continuously flowing to the load so this is how the ground fault will be identified and it will open the uh, relay here or the circuit through the relay it will open the circuit breaker so that the motor can be or the load can be isolated from the faulty condition and the same thing can be achieved using a contactor as well so here we use the uh, mcb here which is activated by the ground fault relay but here we are going to uh, open the same thing with the uh, contactor the same circuit but the only difference is instead of a mcb here we are going to use a contactor so the contactor it is uh, here you can see it is always closed so this is the current path which is coming through here and it is going back to this contactor coil and the contactor coil is energized through this path it will go back to the neutral line like this so it is always energized and because of this energized condition uh, the uh, switch is closed here all the switches are getting closed and when the power is given from the input side of the uh, transformer it will be transferred to the load side and during a normal condition as usual this uh, cbct uh, that is a uh, current transformer is going to give a zero signal and it is going to keep this in on condition itself during faulty condition same like before 10 amperes and 5 amperes and say for example you have 4 amperes in this condition the cbct is going to give a signal to this particular uh, relay and the relay is going to open this contact it will open this contact say it is like this it will open the contact or it will come to this condition when this uh, this happens the current flow here will be stopped when the current flow is stopped then then here this contactor will open up the circuit so when the contactor is open then automatically the motor will go to off state so this is another method of doing the protection in a DC system how the solidly connected devices are connected you can see here there is no much difference here the same way we are going to have a CBCT here that is an active CT and uh, we have a relay here to show uh, the fault condition and here we have uh, 10 amperes of um, incoming current to this field and armature coil and the return current is only a 9 ampere because of the fault current the fault current is 1 ampere which is flowing through the earth. So, the return current and then the incoming current to this transformer will be directed and the negation or the difference between this incoming and outgoing current is 1 ampere. So, the difference which is 1 ampere no, so that current is going to give the signal to the relay and the relay is going to give the indication or it may be connected to the MCB same like before and it will open the circuit. So, this is for the DC system and uh, locating the ground fault uh, in the offline condition we can use the uh, mega or a mega ohm meter so how to find out this uh, first to open the circuit breaker so that means uh, remove the power from the system and after the circuit breaker so you can connect one probe of this mega ohm meter and the other uh, terminal will be connected to the earth conductor or the chassis of the machine and now you apply 500 volt uh, dc signal here or you can give a thousand so mostly it will be used a 500 volt dc voltage so when you apply this 500 volt dc if there is a short then what what is going to happen the current would flow through this fault current faulty condition and it will come back so that means the resistance will be very low when the current can flow that means the resistance will be very low in case if there is no fault in case if there is no fault here when you are applying here what is going to happen so it will not show any current flow so the resistance will be very very high so this mega ohm meter can measure up to uh, in terms of uh, giga ohms or mega ohms also it can measure so we have a, a very high resistance to be measured so we have ir tester insulation resistance tester ir tester you can use ir tester or you can use mega so this ir tester will show the infinite amount of resistance insulation resistance tester it will be in terms of almost 10 giga ohms in a open condition so it will measure and it will show the resistance in case if there is a short then you will have very less in case if you do not have the short in the first phase then you can go to the second phase and yet and third phase and yet so like this we can do the 
testing and you can check the resistance if the resistance are good so that means there is no leakage if there is a resistance very less resistance that means there is a short so minimum resistance uh, for uh, any motor or any load uh, expected is 1 mega ohms for a good condition a minimum the resistance should be 1 mega ohms if you have uh, lesser than 1 mega ohm so the system insulation will not be accepted okay so it should be minimum 1 mega ohms using ir tester and one thing you must remember there should not be any power while doing this test and the circuit breaker should be in open condition so the things to be remembered is uh, this system is going to have very high uh, fault current because uh, the loop impedance of the fault current will be very very less because of solidly grounded system because of this high fault current there could be a damage in the system so to uh, to avoid this particular problem so we can insert a uh, resistance in the ground path so you can insert a resistance here you can insert a resistance so based upon the system voltage and uh, amount of current which is uh, flowing through this path uh, we can decide how much resistance should be given okay so that uh, path we will see in the next video so we will see in the resistance -ly, resistance grounded system in the next video Thank you, thank you very much. I think it is clear and uh, if you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment box. Thank you, thank you so much.